I've been looking all over for you. Where the hell have you been? Well, uh, Kevin, here is Major Daniel. Yeah, Kevin, I'm, Major. Major. I'm Kevin. Well, all right. He's here to talk to the terrorists. You'll need your cooperation. Anything, Smith, anything. You think you can handle it? No problem. Well, we're we in. Here, you got to be careful, though. Charles! Charles! This is Major Daniels. I'm coming in there to meet you guys unarmed. Charlie, we have Major Daniels here. Do I let him in? Well, guess who's coming to dinner? No other person than I want to see. Major Daniels. Bring him in. Come now. Turn your back. Your back. Where's John? That's him over there. How nice of you to visit, Major Daniels. Long time no see. How many years has it been now? Five, perhaps six? Charles, it's nice meeting you again. I thought you were dead in Somalia. You thought we were dead in Somalia because that was where you left us to die. No, Charlie, I never left in Somalia to die. Why didn't you come back to rescue us? I was only following orders. Orders. I was going to come back. That was when the peacekeep mission operation ended and no foreign contingency was allowed into the zone. Lies! Lies, Major Daniels! You betrayed us. We were supposed to be a team. We were supposed to be there for each other. We were there for you. But when it came to our turn, you turned your back on us. Where's Jimmy? Mike, Phillips, and Wilson. Where are they? They're dead, Major Daniels. Dead because you abandoned us behind enemy lines. I did what I had to do, soldier. I had no other alternative than to reschedule. The war ended and that brought our peace commission to an end. But we were still behind enemy lines. Look at this. Look at this. Wilson gave it to me as my birthday present. Nobody ever gave me a birthday present. And I watched Wilson. He was my best friend. I watched him die in my arms. He died in my arms with bullets all over him. And when he died, I swore that I was going to make you pay for your treachery and betrayal. Now, Major Daniels, you have five seconds to get out of here, or you just be another corpse.
Stay down and take cover. Watch the doors and windows and shoot any target on sight. I'm Agent Kevin, State Security Service. And here's Agent Smith, FBI. We would like to know what's going on here. We are launching direct assault on the terrorist. I see. There is a tunnel from here that goes up to the Civic Center. We will take it and come up to the conference center. And from there, we make our move. Who authorized this? The chief of defense staff. What about civilian casualties? Look, do you realize that a lot of innocent citizens are in there? If you hit at the terrorists, they might hit back at the civilians in there. I know what that means, civilian casualties. The army major, they killed is enough casualty for their death sentence. This is military matters. When you kill a civilian, it's a different ball game. But when you kill a soldier, a major, that means war. Sergeant? Sir? How would you like to have your lunch in that conference center today? Then I'll see you at lunch, sir. That will be all. Come on, up, 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 See them again. The tunnel. The tunnel. Hurry up. The tunnel. Get the bombs. Hurry up. No. Go back and check the window. Somehow they knew we were coming. The whole place was wired up with explosives. We had no chance. It was an ambush. Nice game. But it wasn't smart sending those troops something like that. I I swear, Charles, I had no such idea to to attack your you and your men through that tunnel. You all are gonna be responsible for the lives that have been wasted here. You do not take me serious, do you? Hello? Jesus Christ. Hello?
I have decided to discharge all of you. You may leave. Go and leave. Well, if you don't leave, I'll be forced to change my mind. I want to talk to the president now on the next 30 minutes more ministers and the secretaries will die the only 48 hours here at the conference center where a gang of terrorists has taken hostage nine ministers designated for ministerial conference a number of senior citizens has been executed by the gang among whom are the Minister for Health and that of Agriculture. The recent development is a public and gruesome execution of a national security advisor with two other private secretaries, following a failure in an attempt by a military assault team to penetrate a conference center through a tunnel on a rescue operation. It's not yet clear who the terrorists are or what they actually wanted as ransom, but there has been a threat of executing more ministers in just a matter of time. You offer me coffee? Yeah. Why not? I just watched some innocent citizens of this country being executed. And all you do is offer me coffee. Listen, Mr. Smith, it's not your fault. It's yeah. damn well my fault. Each time an innocent citizen of this country is murdered, it is my fault. It is my responsibility to protect them. Your responsibility. Don't forget our oath of allegiance. Our sense of duty. Our devotion to our fatherland. A father leaves his family in the morning and goes to work. His family is out there waiting for him, hoping he'll come back home. And what do they get? He's murdered in cold blood. But these animals! You offer me tea. Kevin, I gotta Listen, go. Smith, what are you doing? Smith! Just stay back, stay back, man! We have a situation, Charles. Smith is approaching. Bring him in. You look like you haven't slept in days, Mr. Smith. What's the problem? Charles, give it up. Let it go. You still have a chance to go. Put an end to this madness. Madness? Well, let me show you what madness truly is. All you ever wanted to do was to run. All you ever talked about was to run! In Somali, in Angola, and in Rwanda, and all the others. You never take the bull by the horn, do you? All you ever said was, when the going gets tough, I will run! But what about Ginny? And Phillips? And Wilson? They're the friends who constantly risk their lives for you. To save you during our mission in the battlefield. Charles. I'm talking to you. And 
never a person here. Let it go. Keep up this game. You still have a chance. Yes. You still have a chance. You still have a chance. That was what you said in Angola that got us into trouble in the first place. I'm not a coward like you. I have dignity. I have pride. And a sense of purpose. I cannot continue to leave my comrades, those that have been there for me, to rot in jail for a duty that did the country. James, Dixon, and Stanley are in jail awaiting execution and all you tell me is to run remember those were the people who called you their friends but you let them down it's a lie they made their own choices you think i don't know what happened in angola they deviated from my game plan i chose money about patriotism. What can be more unpatriotic than selling your ally positions to your enemies? Lies! Lies! Mr. Smith. Aaron White. Lies. Those were lies Major Daniels made up to frame them. May his soul rest in perfect peace. And you, you were coward enough to go along with him and abandon us. I would have killed you first, Mr. Smith. But no. I said I should let you live. So that you can see with your own eyes what true friendship and devotion really is. some prisoners released from Angola. Any luck yet? Uh, none yet, sir. But uh, I think I'll soon get. Come on, keep trying, keep trying. Controller one. Sir. Any signals? Sir. None yet, sir. Ensure you connect it to the microphone so that we can know where they're talking from, okay? I'll do your best, sir. Chief, sir. We have guests from the presidency. Uh, Chief Press Secretary. Oh, come on, let's hear it. I am positive that um, who the terrorists want to speak to is Mr. President and not um, the press secretary. It is against the policy of the presidency to have direct interactions with terrorists. Have they made their demands yet? 
No, madam. But don't you think, madam, that um, we should push aside policies and protocols and consider the lives of those people over there? The position of the president of the nation cannot be compromised just to satisfy the desire of some bloodthirsty terrorists. Uh, wait a minute, madam. Two ministers and the national security advisor to the president have all been executed, and you talk to me about compromise. The decisions on this subject are that of the Joint Chief of Staff and the national advisors. If you choose to disagree, I'll see to it that you are relieved of your duties, Inspector. Or you can tender your resignation. Give me a direct line to the conference center. Yes, ma'am. Please, um, try yeah, 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 we'll try to get the line. Uh, this is the press secretary to the president. Uh, I wish to speak with uh, the leader of the gang. Yes, this is the leader of the gang. I wish to assure you that whatever you tell me will be relayed to the president himself within the next 24 hours. This will be the last time I will talk with anybody that is not the president. Here are my demands, and they should be met within the next 24 hours, or one minister will go down in every 30 minutes. Three of my comrades are in jail, awaiting execution in Angola for a duty that did their beloved country. I demand their immediate release through the federal government agreement with Angola. They shall be brought here for the next immediate flight. Secondly, I want three helicopters and two million US dollars cash to be brought here when my friends arrive from Angola. When this is met, I will set your hostages free. Uh, hello? Uh, uh, can I ask some questions? Come on, get me a line. Hello? He has dropped the line. Sorry, but these are the decisions of the president himself, and it has been approved. A one, we have to immediately, within the next 24 hours, appoint new ministers to take over the offices of those held hostage. Two, the chief press secretary shall go to the media and deny the fact that the federal government has any of her citizens held in prison custody as spies in Angola. That is ridiculous. It that means we are here to authorize the death sentence of those hostages. And why should we deny having prisoners in Angola? Because it will destroy our diplomatic relations with Angola and conflicts with the OAU Agreement Treaty as a front runner for the campaign. That is true. Therefore, we have to abandon them. What if you were involved? The president wants everybody to understand the facts and the delicate nature of this issue and how it will jeopardize the status of this country should we admit the claims of the terrorists. He, however, regrets the predicament of those held hostage and is of the opinion that the interests of a nation and the progress and protection of the majority should supersede that of the few. It is a hard decision to come by. But for the protection of the nation's sovereignty and image, the president regrets that a few must die.
Considering the present ugly situation, the federal government wishes to deny the earlier claim by the terrorists of the existence of possible government prisoners in Angola. This, you know, will be contrary to the OAU Treaty for Peace and our diplomatic and trade relations with Angola over the years. We wish to reaffirm that it is not the policy of diplomatic interest of the federal government to espionage missions or spy forces of any OAU nations or abroad. The terrorists at the conference center are nothing but criminals that want $2 million and are using non-existing prisoners to create tension and diversion of attention and security. However, this ugly incident has presently jeopardized the smooth functioning of our ministerial cabinet and duties in order to maintain consistency and validity to the nation's executive duties new ministers have therefore been appointed and will be sworn in later today at the civic center regarding the facts of the hostages the president in his generosity and sympathy has pledged to pay to the tune of four million u.s dollars to the terrorists and secure the immediate release of the hostages who will be reassigned. It is not the policy of this nation to aid or pay ransom to terrorists, which is in line with the United Nations campaign against acts of terrorism of any sort. But what we are doing is just a case of licking our wounds and saving the day. However, we wish to advise all citizens to go about their normal business and be rest assured that everything is all right. There is no cause for alarm. Thank you. And we should go by the number of businesses. Do you hear it? Say everything is all right. What do they think we're doing? They make you think we're dying. <laughs> Delta, Omega, this is Omega 1, Omega 2, over, I repeat, Alpha, Delta, Sigma, Omega 12, this is Omega 1, Omega 2, over, Alpha, Delta, Sigma, Oscar, this is Omega 2, responding, good. Omega-1 requires immediate response to the civic center activities. Objective, eliminate all principal personnel. Proceed immediately.
father. How nice of you to visit. Blessings upon you, my daughter. Amen. We have brought this little gift of love for little John Paul Clark. Oh, John Paul Clark? Oh, how nice. He's actually one of our friends. But I'm afraid he's in class now. I'll be free in a few hours' time. Well, maybe if you can't wait, I could keep the gift for him. I'll deliver it as soon as it's free. That was splendid. Thank you very much, my daughter. Thank you, Father. Bless you, fathers. Blessings be upon you. Get me the Chief Press Secretary on the line. This is the Chief Press Secretary. What do you want? What I want, madam, you cannot give me. That was a smart one, by the way. But not good enough. You made a mistake. Now, you're going to pay for it. Festus Akinada. Dr. Festus Akinada, do you have children? I have four children. A boy and three girls. A boy and three girls. I want everybody in this hall to bear witness to the fact that Mrs. Clark, the Chief Press Secretary, is responsible for the death of Mr. <laughs> Festus Akindada. What a lunatic. What a nonsense. I'm sure the Chief Press Secretary, Mrs. Clark, would want to receive a comment on this. You can go ahead and elect yourself new ministers. Perhaps you want me to talk to the president. Oh, by the way, you have a nice and intelligent son. I'm sure he'll appreciate this gift this afternoon. Madam, do you have a son? Yes, I have, but he's in school. Where is the school? Kingsway Crescent. He must have given him a parcel bar. What? Aladdin speak with Mr. President. Enough life has been lost. I mean, enough, en enough life has been wasted. Just, just look at that. Just look at how these children have lost their lives for nothing. Huh? Isaac. 
Who is this? This is the president of the Federal Republic. Well, good day, Your Excellency. I understand you're holding some of my ministers hostage, and you have executed some. May the souls rest in perfect peace. I have gone through your demands. I want to assure you that they shall be met within the next 24 hours. After that, you all shall leave this country immediately, never to come back. Do not harm any of my ministers again. This is the last time I'll speak to you. Next time I speak to you, you will be dead man. I don't care what it costs. to notify, notify you that, that I had, had a change in plan. plan. I arranged for me a boss that will convey me to the airport. Let the helicopters meet me at the airport too. There I will see my friends before releasing any of the hostages. Still in there, but we're, we're on top of the situation. You look sad, my friend. The president just granted their wish. You know they'll pay for this. One day they'll pay for this. Congratulations for saving the little boy's life. These wires. I made these naked wires. What are they for? Uh, they're the positive charge wires that served as emergency power line to the construction firm that builds this center here. What's with them? If the current capacity is reduced by half, is it capable of electrocuting somebody? Yeah, yeah, it can, it can. Uh, but for it not to kill, it has to be further reduced. In that case, it can make anyone unconscious or maybe even drive into coma. I have an idea. What idea? You call the electric authority and ask them to lower the current here. You got what I mean? The boss? Mr. Smith, you always wanted to run away. You can't beat them, join them, they say. Well, this is what pride and devotion means to friendship. So long, good friend.
I would have killed you first, Mr. Smith. Remember the mega days? Always blow your last joints. <laughs> it's my turn. What goes round comes around. Where is the last package? When you had the bomb!